Armenians were promised a new leader this Tuesday, but they're going to have to wait. The protest movement that unseated a, uh, a leader of two decades, uh, no match uh, yet for Serge Sargsyan's ruling party. The bid to uh, change the constitution by Sargsyan to keep power proved his undoing, but his Republican Party rejecting the bid by their movement's leader uh, to become interim prime minister. Nicole Pashinyan will have another chance in a week's time. There may be other candidates next time. He'd been warning of a political tsunami if he wasn't approved. Earlier in his speech before Parliament, the 42-year-old former journalist sticking to the clarion call of the protesters outside, the fight against corruption, poverty, and collusion between the, the ruling Republican Party and oligarchs who long backed uh, former leader Sargsyan. Pashinyan going to great pains to stress Armenia is different from other former Soviet republics. Georgia or Ukraine, he has no beef, he says, with Russia, which operates military bases in the country. Can reform come peacefully? Will Moscow stay out of it? More broadly, what does the future hold for a nation with a tragic past, a land of emigration, whose diaspora remains fiercely proud of its culture, and which is now watching events in Yerevan with bated breath. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at what is a moment of truth for Armenia. And with us from the capital, activist uh, Babkin Der Grigorian, who will be joining us uh, shortly. Also in Yerevan, Alexander Markarov, who teaches political science at Yerevan State University. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Jacques Marie Lossian chairs the Armenia France Friendship Group here in the French Parliament. Thank you for being with us. Good evening. And always a pleasure to welcome Christian Macarian, deputy editor in chief of uh, French news magazine L'Express. How are you? Fine, thank you. The uh, France 24 debate on Facebook and on Twitter at the hashtag F24 uh, debate. Uh, we're uh, waiting for. Uh, uh, the uh, speech uh, to his supporters by Nicole uh, Pashinyan. Uh, he needed six votes when the day began f uh, to pick off six votes from the ruling Republican Party to be approved. He was the only candidate. Did not happen. Alexander Markarov, what's going to happen next? Well, uh, basically, after the elections, which uh, provided to Pashinyan only 45 votes, expectedly from three factions of the parliament, the Yelk Way Out faction, to, to which to he belongs, uh, Tsarukyan faction, which supports him, and Dashnaksum faction, which supported him with the exception of one vote, and there was just one vote coming from the Republican faction, uh, which was casted for Pashinyan. Now, uh, the next step will be basically the elections within one week, within one week in the parliament. But what's going on currently in Armenia is basically two parallel processes. One is political process within the parliament, and another one is political protest, which is going on uh, in the streets. So basically, formally, within the constitution and within the legal norms, we're expecting to have the next round of elections within one week. But at the same time, we probably are waiting for the next round of uh, street turmoil. Street turmoil. Babkin Der Grigorian, uh, your thoughts on the fact that uh, in the end, uh, he, we did not get the uh, approval of uh, the protest movement's leader as the new prime minister. Yeah, this well, really, is quite a possible scenario. That even during ba for this. Babkin Der Grigorian. Hello. Yes. Really, I don't know how the Republican Party is going to recover from this. I don't see a way out. They don't have a proper candidate for prime minister. They don't have full control of even of their own party. Their party is breaking up into factions. Uh, the current acting prime minister doesn't have the full support of the party. The the police forces aren't uh, don't have uh, the party doesn't have the full support of the police forces. So uh, what the only thing the Republican Party has really done today is uh, delayed the inevitable. And actually, I think. Uh, angered people to the point where uh, they're, they've could have committed political suicide, as far as I can tell. Uh, committed political suicide, or maybe have they, any political or, or have they bought time in order to come up with a candidate? 
I, there's no candidate right now that they could put forward. They could bring That's down Jesus Christ right now, and and the people would still want Nikol Nikol Pashinyan. Christian so, Macarion, uh, Christian Macarion, if, uh, if if Christian Macarion, your thoughts on on. Uh, why the, he was unable to pick off any of the votes from the Republican Party and what's going to happen next week? Well, it, it's the continuation of the troubles in the street and uh, the street uh, turmoil and uh, a lot of demonstration will carry on. And that's the worst scenario in a way. But this party, the Republican Party, was not ready to leave the power. And what it shows is that the old system is over but uh, there is no uh, parliamentary solution. The solution will come from the street, from the people. And the risk is a kind of break, uh, a gap between the political system and the popular feeling, uh, the popular aspiration to a big and significant change. What do you mean by uh, the, the, uh, the, sol the outcome won't come from parliament? Because if they vote... Next week, if they don't have a prime minister, the Constitution says there have to be snap elections. Is that where we're going? It's a very uh, possible scenario that can happen. But once again, the word belongs now is given to the street, to the people. What does that mean? It means that uh, there is no possibility for a free expression inside the parliamentary system inside the post-Soviet system uh, built and incarnated by the people who were in charge up to there. So the street and Nikol Pashinyan incarnates this is going to, to have the, the last word or not. That's the point today. Do you agree, Jacques-Marie Lossian? Uh, I, I would agree par partially because um, you cannot just say because uh, you have uh, movement in the street, demonstration in the street, that you can neglect the fact that the parliament was elected last year. Uh, let, let's imagine what's happening uh, in, in France, for instance. It's not because you have protests in the street this year that the uh, parliament that has been elected last year is not legitimate. So if you assume that the parliament is legitimate, I think the solution can also come, from, must come from the parliament. Maybe under the pressure of the street, but probably you will find until next week there is a chance that some uh, MPs from the Republican Party may change their minds. Uh, I, I was informed that you had a, a faction of the Republican Party uh, led by Mr. Bagdasarian. There were about 25 MPs that could change his vote uh, ne next week. This is the only way from a parliamentary point of view, you can find a, mm. a solution. In this case, that would mean no, that no, the pressure no, of no, the, no, the no, public no, opinion exactly. was strong enough to to make uh, the, 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 the leading party explode. Yes. Alexander Markarov, do you see that scenario? Well, uh, there are a few possible scenarios, basically. Uh, and uh, one of them is a uh, non-election of the prime minister also during the second round of elections in the parliament. And after that, the dissolution of the parliament, as the constitution says, which was amended a few years ago, bringing it from the semi-presidential constitution to the par constitution of the parliamentary republic. So in case the parliament will not elect the prime minister within the period from 30 days to 45 days, the new elections have to be held. And basically that's an issue for a lot of political players. Uh, would it be a successful parliamentary election for them? Will they be able to repeat their parliamentary success or they will be kicked out by the people who is now in the streets? But uh, let's don't forget about second possible scenarios within one week when there will be another candidate which might be supported this time uh, by 30, must be supported by 35 MPs. So uh, there are a few possibilities, and one of them is uh, the support for any other person, and besides Pashinyan, any other person might come up uh, during the second uh, round of elections, uh, during the second round Dur of during elections the, in the parliament. During but the second round of elections failed, in, inside of the parliament. In case it yeah. So far, it's not the case, and uh, we have, for the time being, a, an opposition that is united behind 
a uh, politician, a young politician who's given up his trademark khaki t-shirts for a suit and tie, Nicole Pashinyan, starting the day as the only candidate to take over that country's leadership. Nicholas Rushworth has more. He is a journalist turned MP turned opposition protest leader. Nicole Pashinyan got a hero's welcome as he toured towns and villages recently. He is seen as a figure of hope for Armenians wanting a new beginning in the country. Protests he led have resulted in the resignation of the Armenian Prime Minister who had been in power for a decade and who sought to stay in the job. We've had one victory. We must continue and see our revolution through. Pashinyan, now as Prime Minister, plans snap elections. One political analyst says he does represent significant change. There's always a problem of shifting from street protests into political office. That is undoubtedly not an easy transition. I think Pashinyan is fit for the Prime Minister's post, which is the highest political office in Armenia. While Pashinyan says he's ready to assume prime ministerial duties, he insists it's not about him. Please understand. The issue is not about getting me elected prime minister. It's about getting rid of the corrupt system. Pashinyan says that only he can rid Armenia of corruption, nepotism and poverty. And he describes his success as a victory over hopelessness, emigration and uncertainty. Papkin Der Gregoria, the, the world is discovering what's a, who, a man who's a firebrand speaker. H how are his politics? Describe his politics for us. All right, we seem to have lost the connection there. We'll try to reconnect uh, with, uh, with Yerevan. Apologies uh, for that. How would you describe Christian Macarion, the, the, the can politics you hear me now? of the... Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Mm. Uh, Nicole... Uh, no, Nicole Pachignan. Nicole Pachignan. What do you think, uh, Babkin Derek Gregorian, of his... Poli what are, how would you describe his politics? Well, uh, Nicole Pachignan uh, entered into the politics as a journalist which was uh, in that's, opposition uh, Alexander Markarov, to all kind of uh, power holders at different... Yeah, uh, Nikol Pashinyan entered into the politics uh, being as a, a journalist who was in the opposition to different type of uh, political systems. And he entered the politics uh, within the early 2000s as an opponent to then President Kocharyan. And then he joined the team of uh, former President Levanter Petrosian when he was trying to be elected uh, after the end of the term of Kocharian. Right, but how are his politics? Tell us how his politics are. Basically uh, his, uh, his politics and his current rhetoric uh, regarding the domestic politics is uh, basically aimed at uh, the anti-corruption, anti-monopoly, both economic and political. He is uh, speaking about uh, the need for bringing power to people, and basically that the rhetoric which is quite often presented by such type of leaders in post-Soviet world. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, Gashvili was such kind of leader who was also trying to fight corruption, and he was also trying trying to fight local oligarchs. Uh, regarding his foreign policy views, uh, while in opposition, he was proclaiming, uh, he was uh, voting against Armenian participation in OEC and membership in the Eurasian Union. But his recent interviews actually showed that he was in such kind of position at that time as member of the opposition. And nowadays, he is speaking about the strengthening and keeping the ties with Russia, with Russian-led uh, Eurasian Union and membership of Armenian in uh, CSTO. So you can see that domestic politics is presented in quite general terms, and he's basically speaking that there is a need to outline major issues and then find the solution by them, for them with all other members who are interested in the solution of problems which in which Armenia is now. So yeah, but let me bring in, let me bring in Christian Macarion on this. Christian, Christian, the 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 uh, um, the leader of the protest movement. At first, they were, yeah, comparing him to people like Mikhail Saakashvili of Georgia when he was younger mm -hmm. and all of this. Uh, how different, though, is he from them? I think um, he is more enrooted in the people. Uh, I mean, he is closer 
to the reality. Uh, Saakashvili was some, somewhere, someone who was imported. He was uh, uh, educated in, in Europe, uh, while uh, Pashinyan is very close to the people. And his personal equation with the Armenian people is uh, a cause and the main cause of his popularity. I think we have to take this in consideration. The second thing is that um, I know he was awkward in many, in many circumstances in the past, maybe as a politician, but he insists on the link with Russia. And that's very important. He is very smart in this way to keep a good relationship with Russia, because Russia, of course, uh, looks at the situation very, very carefully, and uh, is uh, the, probably the Russians are very uh, worried about the evolution of this movement. Up to there, Pashinyan shows that he's very smart. He keeps his relationship with Russia, while Meanwhile, he, he, he keeps also a very good image with the people. The, the, the main cause of this movement is the failure of the previous system. So Armenia is going poorer and poorer, and the country is weak. And there is another factor which is very important. It's the war with, Afghan, with, uh, with Azerbaijan about the question of Karabakh, which has weakened a lot the country without any result up, up to there. And uh, all these mixed together makes Armenia a weaker and weaker country with a decreasing population. So in a way, this reaction is a very popular reaction before being against the party or for this or against that, this reaction is for Armenia. Armenia wants to remain alive. And that's what is very interesting in this movement. Armenia wants to remain alive. We're going to pick up on that point when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. Historic days say protesters in Armenia where the ruling leader of two decades has been forced out. You're watching the speech there. These are live images of Nikol Pashinyan, uh, who is the leader of that protest movement. Parliament, uh, which is controlled uh, by the uh, party of uh, the uh, former president now, Serge uh, Sargisyan. Uh, they rejecting on the first ballot his bid. He was the sole candidate to become interim uh, prime minister. He's addressing the crowds there in Parliament uh, Square in Yerevan. He'll have another chance next week. We're talking about it with, uh, from the Armenian capital, activist Babkin Der Grigorian, Alexander Markarov, who teaches political science at Yerevan uh, University, is with us. Uh, so is uh, Jacques-Marie Lossian, who chairs the Armenia-France uh, Friendship uh, Group in the French Parliament. Uh, and, um, and a member of uh, Emmanuel Macron's La République En Marche party, and uh, Christian Macaillon, deputy editor-in-chief of uh, French news weekly magazine uh, L'Express. What is it all about? Protesters in the capital explain. We believe that since it concerns the domestic affairs of Armenia, based on international law, based on the law of life and logic. That was the, the, the wrong element. We'll, we'll cross back uh, to, to reactions uh, from uh, Yerevan. Uh, but let me ask you, Babkander Grigorian, what brought you out into the streets? Well, I've been involved in various social movements in Armenia uh, for the last few years. And I think what's really galvanized the people here is that this is in a system where elections don't work, this is the truest sense of democracy and it's, being, and it's been done in a peaceful way, in a bloodless way, in a very uh, positive atmosphere. And I think it's something that's, uh, that's really captured the imaginations of uh, everyone in Armenia, not just myself. And what is your biggest gripe? My biggest gripe? Yes, with the current system. Um, 
I mean, the current system is completely broken. The electoral system is completely broken. It does not express the free will of the people. I've been an election observer here for the last six years, and it, and it's it, you 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 realize that you cannot. Uh, count on the official results to express the free will of the people. The economy is in tatters, uh, monopolization. The ruling party, uh, rather than uh, creating a system in which there are proper checks and balances, has chosen to entrench itself. And I think what you're seeing now is an attempt to detrench them and to move Armenia forward in a positive direction. I think you've seen a lot of young people out on the street, and you realize that this is a new generation standing yes, up. Yes, that's true. A new generation uh, standing up, Jacques-Marie Lossian? Yeah, I would like to point uh, out that um, we were told that we have now, that now tonight 20,000, 25,000 people demonstrating in, in Yerevan. Uh, the country has less than 3 million people. It means that uh, if these kind of things would happen in France, it means that you have half a million people demonstrating in front of, of, of the parliament. So it's clearly a huge and strong movement. Uh, we have to understand that uh, a lot of Armenian people have decided to, to show uh, what their interest mm. is. Mm. The second point is we should ask ourselves, um, why has Mr. Sarkisian resigned? Because he was uh, previously uh, the president. Change the constitution. Change the constitution to, be, to, to make a sort of a Vladimir Putin-like uh, story. Prime minister. Prime minister. And then uh, a few days after being elected by the parliament, he, he, he resigned after a discussion, a talks with uh, Mr. Pashinyan. And he explained, uh, we were sorry, we were wrong. So it means that probably he has felt that he was lacking support back from his uh, own party. So the question is, why has he resigned so easily and so rapidly? He resigned easily and rapidly. You agree, Christian Macario? Yes, he did. And uh, this sentence when he said, uh, I was wrong and Pashinyan was right, is very strange. It's a very weird sentence. It must be interpreted, uh, but I'm, 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 I'm not... Uh, capable of this tonight. Uh, I think there are a lot of hidden uh, meanings. Uh, what I see is that this movement is democratic, yeah. it's generational, yeah. it's anti-system, and it's very nationalist. Nationalist in the in the proper way, in the most noble uh, definition of, of, the of this word. It means these people demonstrating in the street want their country to stay alive and a, 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 a country, a living country, because a lot of Armenians are living uh, for years and years, leave Armenia to go to Russia or, or elsewhere, mm -hmm. and it is a cause of a weakness for Armenia. Uh, there is something the, 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 f the former power is responsible for, and that's what the demonstrators say. Uh, in the streets of Yerevan. They, they don't want to... Yeah, because they, we're, we're talking about a nation of three million people. Yes. But there's... An maybe officially. Less. Maybe less. Maybe officially, less. because the statistics are not... But there's an estimated eight million of them living ar ar around the globe. Uh, 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 are, are people of Armenian extraction. Uh, diaspora. Or the, di the diaspora uh, uh, around the globe. A bit akin to the situation we had for decades in Ireland, here in Western Europe, where uh, the Irish would go abroad because there were no prospects at home. It's complicated because all the Armenians living in the diaspora don't come necessarily from Armenia, but more uh, from the Ottoman Empire, uh, from the Turkish part, oh. and after the genocide of 1915. So it's a mixed... Uh, the, the, the Armenian history is very complicated. But one point is important. Everywhere in the diaspora, everybody gathers... Uh, around the, the concept of the Republic of Armenia because this small land is the historical land part, part, the main part of the historical land of Armenia. So uh, with, with, the, with the seat of the church, for instance, in Echmiadzin. Uh, let, let's to... just remind you of the fact that in four weeks from now, on the 28th of May, we will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the first Republican Republic. Mm. Uh, the first uh, Republic in Armenia. So it's an important coincidence to show that... Uh, it was in, 19, in 1918. 18. 
Yes. Eighteen. It lasted only two years, and uh, at the end of the year um, uh, 1920, uh, because of the war with Turkey and the Turkish invasion, Armenia was Sovietized. Bolshevik came and take the power, and Armenia uh, went back to Russia. So the in independence lasted less, l less, less than two than years, two years uh, somewhere. So it's a very... A little bit more than two years. Yes. Sorry. So the, the, the problem now a, a for... A bit more, sorry. I said less, more, more, more than two years. Yes. The, the challenge for the Republican Party now is to understand if they want to remain in power or if they want uh, to accept a sort of a smooth, soft transition, releasing the power to, to Pashinyan. And as I said before, there are different factions. And Mr. Bagdasarian from the Republican Party was explaining that he was looking and challenging Mr. Yeah. Pashinyan on many yeah. items. Apparently, Pashinyan didn't succeed in convincing the, the faction of the uh, Republican Party to vote for him. He has another week to convince them or but to find a compromise. If not, we will have a snap election. I, I understand, but I, I don't completely uh, agree with you because describing the, the, the parliamentary system is, in a way, going backward. I think what happens in the street is much more important. Uh, these people want a, 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 a new country with a new system. They want an, a, a free economy. They don't want the oligarchs everywhere mm -hmm. uh, monopolizing the benefits uh, and uh, taking advantage of the of, of the poverty. Uh, Alexander so, Alexander Markov, let me ask you about this because we know the oligarchs, who the oligarchs are in places like Ukraine. Who are the oligarchs in Armenia? Who are who? Are who? The oligarchs in Armenia. Okay, uh, the, all, there are different types of oligarchs in Armenia, and a uh, few of them are associated uh, with the Republican Party, and part of them are the member of the parliament. So you will see there is a sort of symbiosis of uh, political power and economic power in Armenia, and uh, the issue is where from it comes. Does it come from uh, economy for, to politics or from politics to economy? Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, one of the supporters for Pashinyan, uh, the head of the Tsarukyan uh, faction in the uh, Tsarukyan bloc in the parliament, Gagik Tsarukyan, he is himself also considered to be a big one of the big oligarchs in Armenia. So uh, those are the guys, according to Pashinyan, who monopolized different areas, different spheres of economics, and they don't allow small and medium enterprises to uh, act freely and provide the uh, activities for the free market. So basically, one of the points which were mentioned by Pashinyan were actually accepted as a critique. Critique was accepted by the Republicans, but uh, they were not uh, convinced with this program, but they accepted the critique. And the next step for them will be to think, are they going to uh, support some other candidate, present their candidate for the next elections, or uh, they're going to go for the dismissal of the parliament. Well, let me read to you Including on that score. Some, some of the reactions we're getting and, uh, from um, the speech that uh, he's, he's been giving live, um, uh, Pashinyan telling the protesters the only negotiations he's willing to hold will be over the, quote, funeral of the ruling party. He's urging police to put down shields and join the protest rally. And he's called for, I'll put it to you, Jacques Marodissian, a, a general strike all over Armenia on Wednesday. Your reaction. I, I think no, nobody knows what can happen. It, it depends on the reaction of uh, the Republican Party. Uh, I just want to say that um, if you look at the majority at the parliament, you had two parties, the Republican Party, but also the Dashnak Party, the socialist Dashnak Sution. And this time they have voted for, for Pashinyan. Uh, Dash, Dashnaks are out from the coalition. Please note, sorry. Please note that Dashnak soon is out of the coalition, so they and, and, don't and form really, the majority they're, they're nowadays. They're also it's only ba Babkin Der Gregorian. They're the smallest party in, in, in parliament. Yes, but they, yeah. they voted yeah, for Pashinyan. The, the Dashnaks are the smallest party 
in Parliament. They they voted for Pashinyan. There are five or six MPs. Uh, there's four blocks in Parliament, and every party in Parliament, aside from the ruling party, has uh, has. Uh, Pledge support for Pashinyan. Let so me let me the, ask you, uh, Babkin uh, Dergorian. Let me ask you because to, we're, you you were saying earlier how so far the, the only movement. Way out of this is to the, make sure the Republican the, parties, uh, some alone. people break rank and uh, go for Pashinyan. Let me ask you about this, awesome. Babkin, because you were telling us earlier about how the the movement has been peaceful so far. Uh, we're, there's calls from. Um, Pashinyan, the leader, uh, for protesters to block the streets, the airport, everything. That's a quote. Um, he says uh, that uh, he wants total civil disobedience uh, through uh, non-violence. Uh, again, as he calls for that uh, general strike, we seem to have lost the connection, it seems, again, with uh, Babkin Der Gregorian. Apologies for that. Uh, Christian Macarion, will it remain peaceful? I hope so. We all hope so, because, uh, uh, you know, it's for a small people like the Armenian people, seeing Armenians against Armenians is a tragedy, once again. And Armenia, the Republic of Armenia, doesn't need a new tragedy. Uh, once again, this country is at war with Azerbaijan, officially, uh, on the question of nagorno karabakh This question is victim of a blockus caused by Turkey. So uh, all this uh, must be uh, kept in, in, in mind, mind because it's not a simple situation. Not a simple situation. And you were mentioning in part one of our discussion um, about what the reaction will be from Russia. Let's go over some of those reactions. A few days ago, uh, the Russian foreign ministry spokesperson uh, saying, Armenia, Russia is always with you. Maria Zakharova writing on Facebook, a nation that has the strength in the hardest periods of its history never loosen from each other and maintain respect uh, towards uh, each other, pledging their strong ties. Interesting because uh, her warm words for Armenia put her in the same company as uh, Russia's opposition, up to a point, Kremlin foe and former chess champion Gary Kasparov tweeting a few days back. Wouldn't it be great if the people came into the streets to kick out Putin like what happened in Armenia? Yes, but the problem is there aren't enough Armenians in Russia. Of course, everybody projects, right? When they see uh, something happening in a former Soviet republic, they project on their own situation, yeah. particularly yeah, Moscow. Yeah, but the paradox there is that Armenia is not against Putin, is not against the, the Russian problem. He's uh, not against Putin, but you were saying in part one of our discussion, if, 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 you, yeah. as the, if it's as autocratic as you describe it, will Putin feel it as though it is a the threat? Par the paradox is there. It's an anti-post-Soviet system uh, really? movement, mm -hmm. but not an anti-Russian Russian. Movement. Ba That's Babkin very important Der to, to keep in mind. If we don't. We've lost Babkin Der Gregorian <laughs> again. Is this a threat to Vladimir Putin? What's happening right now in the streets of Yerevan? I, I, I would say probably, um, as I as I was saying previously, uh, when Sarkisian resigned from uh, PM uh, post, uh, probably he also had talks with Putin. I don't know, but we can assume very that likely. Like, most likely, it happened. So it means uh, Putin probably uh, advised him to do to do so. Okay, so it means also that Pashinyan might have been talking with Putin because he cannot neglect the fact that Russia is the first uh, uh, commercial link mm -hmm. for for Armenia. Uh, when we we were saying that uh, Armenia is facing a lot of uh, economic problems, uh, we must never forget that. Uh, the two factors you mentioned previously are very important also, not just corruption or uh, other factors. The fact that we have a blockage from Turkey. Blockade. Blockade, blockade. from Turkey. And also that there is a, a state of war with Azerbaijan. These two factors have a tremendous mm. impact on and, the economy. And it's good to, also. to remember that uh, Mr. Sarkisian, the former president and former prime minister, was coming from 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 the war of Karabakh, yes. uh, so that's very important. He, he took the head of the country because he was a, a leader of the the army and uh, in the in the war of Karabakh. This phase, the last ten years, is very important to understand what happens now. Now people want m suddenly to get rid of the old system, but they want. Uh, 
wealthiness and normal uh, democratic access to free information and to the free market. Yeah, Armenia is an international country. We must uh, also remember that at the end of the year, in October, Armenia will welcome the summit of Francophony. Fran yeah, French-speaking nations. French-speaking yeah. nations will all gather in Yerevan. So it, it's a sign, it's a symbol, and it's a great victory of the former government uh, to have uh, uh, attracted Emmanuel Macron, who normally should go in yeah. Yerevan. I, I was so in. I hope the troubles will 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 stop, and that there will there will be no dramatic issues. When, uh, when issue. President Sarkisian uh, came to to Paris in in January, I was invited by President. Macron to, to attend the meeting with the French ambassador and uh, the Armenian ambassador and Mr. Sarkisian. We discussed a lot about the uh, uh, Francophony uh, summit and uh, President Macron was invited by President Sarkisian, who was president at the time, uh, for a state visit, the same state visit like um, he did in, uh, in the US, and also uh, to organize an economic forum Pre prior to the, the summit. It yeah. means that we agreed at that time to help uh, the development uh, of Armenia from an economic point of view, uh, new technologies, agriculture, and uh, power. Let, let, let's see if we can just dip in now and listen to the scenes there outside Parliament Square and listen to the crowd if it's possible. Uh, Jacques-Marie Lossian, you were saying 30,000 people in that square uh, outside, uh, uh, outside the parliament. For a tiny country like Armenia, it's a huge number. It's, yes. Uh, if you have less than 3 million inhabitants, imagine that in Paris it means uh, 600,000 people on, on the Champs-Élysées. Alexander Barkarov. Yes, uh, there is a crowd in the Republic Square which is continuing its support to uh, Nikol Pashinyan, but uh, he has to present his vision for the future activities uh, in the next days and see if he will be able to continue his uh, struggle for prime ministership during the next uh, parliamentary elections. So basically the story, it's not finished, it's just in continuation. And such kind of revolutionary events usually have their beginning, but it's hard mm. sometimes to stop. Mm. Hard sometimes to stop and get down to the brass tacks of governing. Uh, let me ask you, um, uh, uh, Alexander, uh, the crowds outside celebrating in Parliament Square, is that in any way, uh, can that be perceived as a threat to Vladimir Putin? Uh, well, uh, f formally, the formal announcements by uh, Pashinyan were uh, quite friendly for uh, Russian politics. But uh, mm. nobody will forget uh, that Pashinyan and his party was actually among those political actors uh, who were speaking about the need of getting out from the Eurasian Union. So one thing is to be in opposition and another thing is to meet with political realities especially for Armenia, which has an unresolved uh, conflict around Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh with Azerbaijan, and it has other security issues which actually are associated more with uh, the assistance from Russia than any other source which couldn't provide at this moment uh, security assistance to Armenia or security guarantees for which the country is looking for in our really unstable region, especially considering the fact that Turkey is another neighbor for Armenia. Uh, it's really an issue of uh, daily security in, uh, at some point. Right. Armenia, so, Armenia which can't point, afford to burn its, uh, to burn its bridges. A... We're going to have to leave it there because, unfortunately, we're running short on time. I want to thank you so much, Alexander Markarov, for joining us uh, from Yerevan. I want to thank as well Bob Kander, Grigorin, Jacques-Marie Lossian, uh, Christian Macaron. Stay with us. Media Watch is next. <laughs>